You're listening to The Kylo Show, the podcast where we talk about how to keep your love on no matter what and why whole healthy families are going to save the world. And it starts right now. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to The Kylo Show. For some more. Uh Uh-huh. We are so close to that one-year mark. I know. We got like two more. This is like 51 right here, right? I think we're at 50. 50. But we're almost 50. Okay, so we're only going to 51. (laughs) Yeah. So there you go. 52 is one year. Oh. So we're we're almost there. We got stopped because we were having too much fun before we started recording. I know. said, stop talking. Stop talking. You have to say this on there. (laughs) So we're talking about my computer that we use often for a timer. Mm. Is has hot corners because mm-hmm. it's a Mac, mm-hmm. and I love hot corners. And I didn't realize how much you and I are similar in the love we have for hot corners, or the other option of just having one desktop instead of going back and forth, getting and lost in spaces. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and then I can't figure out where it was that I had it. So uh, yeah, no just way. Having one, yeah, it makes it easier. And everybody that touches my computer. Yeah. Hates it. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much every time I speak yep. and they have to mess with my computer and it does that in the look on their face. Yeah. Like, what, what? Oh, you have those corner things. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I do. Yep. Well, I got that from you. This is my computer. <laughs> Instead of the way I want. <laughs> I yeah. want it like that. The other area that we're similar in that's kind of weird is if we have any candies or things that have color that we're eating. So M&M's. M&M's. You, mm-hmm. you and your peanut M&M's. Mine would probably be Skittles more, but... Mm-hmm. What do, what do we both do? We separate them by color uh-huh. before we start. Yes. Yes. Or while we're eating them. Yes. We pour them out <laughs> in our hand or in a pile, and then we just start separating them. I don't know if you do this, but then I start eating the greatest number to make it equal yep, with all exactly. the Exactly. <laughs> yep. Way to go, girl. That's right. I did that in front of my uh, field supervisor, who is a LCSW, a licensed clinical social worker. And, he's, and I'm doing it while we're in the meeting. He said, so I can see you got some perfectionism going on. <laughs> I said, what? Perfectionism? I'm like, well, yeah, look at your M&Ms. I'm like, what? And they were all an equal <laughs> number and they you know, were yes. sort of by color. And oh. I said, hmm, I never noticed that about myself mm-hmm. before. Uh, it shows up, but it's quite funny. Mm-hmm. There yeah. you go. There you have it. Well, that's a window into the weirdness of us. Yep. Uh, we, I didn't realize how similar we were until we started talking about that, which is why they're yelling at us to stop. So we Stop. Can, Talking. It's odd little things. I don't know that. I didn't know the M M&M and M thing about you. Yeah. That uh, now I do. But how, how do you teach that? I don't. You don't. It's, <laughs> a, it's <laughs> DNA. It's genetic code. Oh, it's that's... passed it to you in secret. Mm-hmm. So that's it. you're welcome. Uh-huh, thanks. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, with all of that excitement, we <laughs> are still on our uh, Q and A sessions. You know, we're Love it. really getting through all of the ones that we've gotten this year, which are great questions, all different topics. But it's been fun. We, to we don't about. mean to hold you up, but we just only have so much time to get to them. Yeah. So we're like draining the pond right now. We're, we're trying just, to. But they're still, it's still raining. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll jump into our first question, which comes to us today from Mark. Hello, Danny and Brittany. My name is Mark, and I've been married to my wife for 17 and a half years. We have two children, ages 11 and 9. Uh, this past April, Uh, My wife came to me with her brother and her father and told me that she felt like God was telling her that it was time for a divorce. And so she's moving through that process right now. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes in the past 17 years. Uh, Both of us have, obviously, but um, I've never cheated on my wife physically. You know, I've never kissed anyone or anything like that. Um, I'm just struggling with how to approach this from a biblical perspective because I don't understand how or why God would tell someone to divorce when that doesn't seem to be what's written in his word in our circumstance, at least Uh, I would appreciate your input. Thank you very much. Well, yeah, it's a hard one. Yeah. I wonder, um, it's hard only having one, side as well it's proverbs says that proverbs 18 says yeah. that uh there are two sides to a story but the first one you hear feels like the story and it always does change it when you hear both sides uh he did say you know i've, I've made mistakes and mm-hmm. um it sounds like there's a 
a repetitive cycle of mistake enough to where brother and dad have come in Mm -hmm. to uh, let's assume that brother and dad are also believers and have a a strong commitment to the word. And, Mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's not, let's just say this isn't just some frivolous, weird out of the blue the Lord told me, yeah. but we worked our way up to this. Mm-hmm. It's you know, a serious intervention that has led to divorce. And uh, I think, you know, Mark, you know, part of the issue is going to be that she doesn't believe you when she, you say you're sorry. Yeah. And she feels totally powerless and or abused by this repetitive cycle. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll just set that out there like, okay, this is probably what it took to get a family intervention. And um, I don't know the circumstances well enough to say that divorce is the answer, Mm -hmm. uh, but it could be, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, I I do know that divorce is a horrible, horrible result, consequence Mm -hmm. for people in relationship um i'm not a a, a divorce advocate uh, but at the same time when there's an ongoing cycle of abuse in a relationship it can be the only way that breaks that pattern mm-hmm. and so i've i've talked to people who after 25 years of repeated abuse in relationship said I stayed in the marriage for the kids. Mm-hmm. Like, well, that wasn't a gift to the kids. To train them in a family of disrespect and dishonor was not a gift to the children. And I don't believe that you did it for the kids. I think you did it for yourself because you were scared of what was going to happen mm-hmm. to you yeah. in that circumstance. So moving on, uh, Everything you can possibly do to preserve your marriage is your responsibility as a a believer. Mm -hmm. It really is because it's a big deal to get a divorce. Um, So having just this information, you know, I mean, we're making lots of assumptions, Assumptions. but at the same time, I'm trying to drill down into, uh, I can think of maybe one or two couples that I said to one or both of them, this, this should end in divorce, mm-hmm. but I can't even think of those situations right now. So I'm just giving myself responsibility for ever saying it because it would take a lot for me to get there, but I can see it getting there. Mm-hmm. I wonder in, in Mark's a, a approach to his wife with this current information, um, remembering Mark that you can't control another human being. So you know, how do you respond to your wife? Well, I think that you have to remember you don't control her. Mm -hmm. So if this is the decision that's been in front of you, you, this is the decision that she has made. Mm -hmm. So your response now becomes, you got to own, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So how are you going to manage, you know, wow, this is heartbreaking news for my family. Um, Maybe you're blindsided, maybe you're not. Sounds like you're aware of problems, but what are you going to do to work on yourself? Because that's the biggest thing that you can do. And what are you going to do to, you know, manage most likely to have some kind of bitterness growing in your heart towards this woman, the mother of your children? Mm -hmm. Um, Because you can't control anything that she is doing. And so to try and reason or say, but God didn't say that, it's not going to work out for you. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's my thought is you have to maintain the I control myself and no one else. Mm-hmm. So what is the stance that you're going to do that represents keeping your love on and staying a powerful person? And I would advise you to go find some covering to have this um, process to walk through with. Mm-hmm. Someone that is um, a leader, a, a God-fearing man, that can process the pain, the frustration, the disappointment, and maybe point out some areas that cost you Mm -hmm. this marriage. Mm -hmm. And a sociological reality that we live in today is, uh, you know, 
a couple forces are at work here. One is that women are actually now seen as powerful in families, in, in relationships, in marriage, in society, in businesses, in leadership. W- women have, you know, they finally are recognized as an equal mm-hmm. and not a subordinate. So that turns marriage into a, a place that is uh, honor required. Yeah. You have to know how to cultivate a culture of honor in a marriage or women in droves will leave because they don't believe the lie that they are a subordinate slave mm-hmm. to a man yeah. like as, as they shouldn't. And your biblical worldview is women are subordinate slaves. You got, you got some growing to do. Yeah. The other piece is there's no societal pressure that there once was to force women to stay in a marriage or stay in a relationship or stay in any environment where they are experiencing ongoing destructive cycles and abusive cycles in relationships, whether it's work or with a parent Mm -hmm. or in a marriage. There's no societal pressure left to keep that there. So it's a reality when... A woman says, I've had enough of this. Mm-hmm. I require change one way or the other. Yeah. I'll change with you or I'll change apart from you. Yeah. But I'm not going to live like this. The responsibility that falls to a man to grow up mm-hmm. and or adjust is... Mo- it, 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 it's magnified. You don't get to stay a relational midget in your marriage anymore, gentlemen. Mm. Likewise, I'm talking to the you know I'm talking to the men right now, but it's both. Yeah, it's it's yeah, both. It's is. I'm not picking a side. I'm just saying that society has been set up for a very long time to where men could be relational midgets, which is what fuels the woman in the relationship is her emotional well-being and connection and nurturing and cherishing. And men have been malnourishing their women for a very long time because of an external pressure and because of a woman actually believing she didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a fantasy to believe a woman doesn't have a choice. She does. And so if you don't recognize that and adjust, then it's... It's a painful reality that mm-hmm. your wife walks away. Yeah. And, and sometimes that walking away isn't uh, divorce. Sometimes it's, I'm going to love you from a different house mm-hmm. until you can figure out what you're going to do, but this is what I'm going to do, mm-hmm. which um, I've been involved in a handful of those ones. And, and that's, the, that's the opportunity that gives, I think, the spouse, ma- male or female, the opportunity of, are you going to grow? Mm-hmm. So this family grows, or are you going to stay stunted and the cycle ends? Are you going to pretend to be a victim? Yeah. You know, are you going to pretend to be powerless and irresponsible? Yeah. W- wife or husband, whoever yeah. it is, mm-hmm. when you pretend to be a victim of the other person being powerful mm-hmm. and taking responsibility for themselves, you infuse your relationship with. A, a disconnect that will not be repaired Yeah. until you take responsibility for you. Which if you've been living 20 years in a marriage of not being responsible for yourself, it is a hard adjustment. It is. And, and, and uh, it's hard news. Yeah, it's super hard news. And that's the... Wow, well, this is a heavy question right out the Boom, gate. Boom, right out of the gate. Here. There we go. I'm Here glad we, we opened with m and <laughs> Skittles. Households are filled with anxiety because most people are living in disconnected relationships. But you don't have to. The Kylo 5 Virtual Workshop with Danny and Brittany will help you build, heal, and protect your most vital relationships. To reduce anxiety and build connection, go click the link in the show notes to sign up today. The next question we have comes to us from Reba. Hello, guys. I super appreciate what you all have done. Uh, it has helped me tremendously. Um, but I just realized that I have um, a question about my daughter. She is 
Let's see, 12 going on 13. And um, your materials have saved our lives together uh, because she's very, very strong-willed. I'm very strong-willed too. So, of course, fireworks happen a lot. Um, but I've been using the materials to help me with that. The big question I'm having now is when, you know, she's really upset about something. I've tried the, uh, you know, you seem upset. What do you need? When I try that approach, um, she's usually so mad that she comes back with, well, I need you to do whatever. And the thing is usually completely unrealistic. Like if she's not wanting to do her school, because we homeschool, uh, she's all upset and carrying on about that. And I'll ask her, what, do you, she, what does she need? And she'll say, well, I don't need to do school. So, you know, it's, I kind of when she throws those curveballs at me, I'm kind of like, well, that's not really an option. So where do I go from here? So she's really good about throwing those kind of things back at me. But I'm like, I don't know where to go from here. So whenever I ask her, what do you need? What she comes back at me it's none of her responsibility. She's trying to throw it back on me again, and I don't know where to go from there. So any help would be amazing. Thank you so much. Well, homeschool mom, I'll leave that to you. <laughs> well, you know, strong-willed kids, we've had a handful. They're, they come in different shapes and sizes, and yes, they manifest yes. in one way or another. Um, I would, if you can be a little bit more specific, um, you know, what do you need from me to help you with your schoolwork today? Um, I don't. I need no schoolwork. Well, unfortunately, we have schoolwork today. So let me know when you've got a need I can help you with. And that's typically what I would end with and and walk away because I don't like to stay in this exchange of, you know, disrespect and sarcasm. And, and I know for myself, as an intense woman, I will just take the bait when I didn't want to mm. because I stay in, in it trying to rationalize, trying to use the tools. But if I can just say, well, let me know when you've got a need that I can help you with. Um, I love you. I'll be in my room mm -hmm. or I'm going downstairs. But I, I, I quickly, if it's an unrealistic expectation of a need that basically is removing them from any responsibility of doing what they need, I have to remove myself. That's the first thing for me because otherwise I get sucked into it. Uh, and I think that might be part of the, the, the trick here that's got you stumped is you don't – there's some kind of belief that I can't tell her I can't meet that need. And that's one of the things that we, we ask the question all the time, what do you need, what do you need? Mm -hmm. Well, I am I am not going to be the source of every need that my child ever has. So the the reality to know that and to be able to say, uh, I'm, unfortunately, I can't meet that need for you. Mm -hmm. But I'd love to help you figure out how I can help meet a need around your schoolwork. Let me know. Mm -hmm. But if I take on the pressure of I have to say yes to when a need is presented, then I'm going to live panicked at these needs that they're throwing at me. So I'd be just confronting if that's something that might be going on. Uh, and it's just it's just one of those things that they say that they know is going to get you stumped, and it has, and so they keep using it. It's one of my my favorite things with parents is I when I get we get to find these these potholes, if you will, that take them out and then we fill them up and then they're completely different game when they face that same situation. They're like, it doesn't do it anymore. It doesn't work. I figured it out. I'm like, yeah, it's because you filled the pothole and the kid's like, mm, oh, dang it. I got to find a new one. Totally. So it is these hooks. But, um, you know, having a nice try, you could add one of the one liners in there that we love from Love and Logic. Um, you know, I need you to not give me homework. Nice try. Mm hmm. That could be, I don't know. And and that also removes you from taking the bait. So uh, I would just remember to stay powerful in the moment and and know that this insane request, you know, doesn't change the goal of, you know, school will get done today. How long it takes is up to your child. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a general, you know, this lifts it off the parenting and homeschool situation, but in an exchange where you're trying to get at what somebody needs, it's really what do they need to feel, mm -hmm. not what it is they need you to do. Because if you, if as soon as you say, well, what do you need? They say, well, I need you to do. Yeah. That's where I need control of you mm -hmm. is what 
is is the the dynamic and no one is going to love being controlled by another person so it's what do you need to feel and and the feeling is i need to feel powerful i need to feel uh successful i need to feel believed in i mean all sorts of things yeah i need to feel validated i need but they don't know that they just know they need to get rid of school like all right well that's (laughs) okay there's a start yeah that's not gonna happen so you what do you need to feel honey like i don't know like all right well how can i help you figure that out because there's the problem the problem isn't math or whatever the problem is I don't know what I need, but I need to feel, and then eventually it'll come down to, like I'm winning, like I like like I'm good at this, like because it's it's generally I'm struggling, I'm tired of struggling, mm-hmm. and so what are you struggling with? Math. Mm. You're probably struggling with feeling successful at math because I think if you were knocking math out of the park all day, we wouldn't be having this yeah. conversation. Very true. And a great place to start for kids, if you don't know, or, or it's a uh, foreign feeling to f- what do you need to feel is the feeling wheel. I mean, mm-hmm. you can look that up on Google in a hot second. They even mm-hmm. have little faces. I mean, you could really get it preschool level or mm-hmm. something that's mature for adults to get down to more than just mad or mm-hmm. sad. So that's a really great resource. It's free. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Yeah, stay away from the emoji with the middle finger. Yeah, <laughs> just don't 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 helpful. pick that wheel. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, those are great great questions to be asking to find that problem. Mm-hmm. So, totally. All right, you got this. Um, the next question that we have comes to us from Dion. Hi, Dan and Brittany. My question is: To what degree does financial compatibility affect uh, the success of a relationship for two people who are considering getting married, um, i.e. if two people have very widely different standards of living um, and income earnings, how does that affect the ability for them to uh, forge a common path in being married? Or if that is the case, what do they need to consider um, if they are two people who do want to be together. Thank you. I always love when this comes up in the DTR. Mm-hmm. You know, no one ever thinks it's a big topic, but Ben and I know from mm. being married that sex, money, and communication are always hot topics. So yeah. we, we'd we love to um, just highlight the belief systems, you know, habits that are, you know, ingrained in people and, and that manifest in money and our, our management skills and different things and um, and the impact that that will have on a relationship if we are not on the same page. Mm-hmm. Well, this is going to test your conflict resolution skills. That too. And, and your communication. Right. You know, <laughs> And your boundaries, potentially. <laughs> it's all about how well do we negotiate, you know, how well do we find movement towards a, a, a middle and this is going to show up in every area of your relationship. Let's, you know, let's just start out male and female. What could be possibly different <laughs> with, between men and women? Well, there's a myriad of things just that. Drop a couple kids in there, boom. We, now we found out we have different parenting approaches and goals and styles and experiences and normals. Um Oh, you haven't met my parents yet. Oh, well, that'll do another one. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. It just keeps going. Mm -hmm. So financial differences is the tip of the iceberg, really. And Maybe everything else is lining up for them, and this is the one that they seem to be. I doubt it. Because if, if it's, they're willing to look at everything, well, I doubt that this is the only difference. Because if this is that big of a difference, there's a bunch of other ones. <laughs> you true. get to that situation very differently as people. So, I, I would skill up in my ability to communicate through disconnection mm. and. Uh, you know, your approach to finances scares me. Yeah. Is, okay, I feel scared to talk about, 
to deal with, to, to set at, goals, yeah. to hear this conversation. And it, it will become an ongoing source of disconnection. So mm-hmm. if you don't learn how to stay connected in this conversation, that that's what leads to the fail, not the differences, the inability to stay connected mm-hmm. facing this issue. Yeah, that's great. Uh, it is true. It is, it's not the top three things we normally talk about in our DTR assessment, but it is in there. It's way up there. And um, if your priority is finances is, is one of the biggest rocks in your in your bucket, I think you probably should be taking a look at what your ability to have in conflict and communication. Because if it's if those rocks aren't as big, then you probably will never be able to really talk about the finances. Mm-hmm. And, and and finding a common, uh, you know, find out where we do agree. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Dave Ramsey does a great job yep. setting out there like, what idiot wouldn't want these goals, you know? <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. So some people have to come up to that, and some people have to settle down a little bit yeah. to, to have this. But there's probably a middle ground that you could find in something like a Dave Ramsey mm-hmm. Who, who serves as a neutral party presenting to you, and then you guys agree to work towards this. Mm-hmm. I think practical application is if you're still dating and moving towards marriage, you know, your wedding budget or different things that you're trying to save together towards in this life that you're moving towards, you know, a down payment for a home, a new car for somebody, you know, you're both willing to participate and practice communication and moving towards a common goal, that'll give you great room to give feedback and to see while you're really going to, you're going to skill up in the place where you're not gifted in or not normally uh, practicing good habits in. And, and this is a, a simple way to just activate that is set a goal that you're both going towards to see if you're able to, to have powerful conversations around that. Totally. So, all right. Well, the next question that we have comes to us from Alicia. Hi, Danny and Brittany. Uh, My name is Alicia. I love the Keep Your Love On book. I've been through it twice and plan on going through it a third time with friends using your study guide. Um, And one of the things that I am trying to implement along with um, all the principles that you teach about in your book is um, forgiveness in light of still using healthy communication and healthy boundaries in particular. Um, I grew up kind of with the common, I guess, Christian idea of what forgiveness looks like where you kind of just forgive and forget and everything goes back to normal. Um, like nothing ever happened. And, um, I was in an abusive relationship for about 13 years. And, um, the last three years of that relationship, Um, I started realizing that the way I was forgiving was actually kind of setting myself up for, um, staying in the same cycle of abuse that I was in. And so now I'm trying to kind of figure out how to still forgive with healthy boundaries and, um, you know, not allowing the same access as before when my trust has been broken or when abuse has occurred. And so I was wondering if you guys had any good tips or input on that. Well, forgive and forget is, uh, is not a great strategy because it's, it's, it's parallels denial. Yeah. It's pretty powerless. And it is is a guaranteed way to get more of the same. Yeah, you know. So uh, forgive is is I, I remove the punishment paradigm. Like mm-hmm. I'm I'm not here to punish you. I'm not your judge. I'm not your jury. I'm not your executioner. And here's the new boundary in our relationship that's been established that. If I had to protect myself from you mm-hmm. because you will not protect me from you, then so be it. Yeah. And until that changes, that boundary stays there. Mm-hmm. And it's not rejection because there is the hope yeah. of reconciliation. Mm-hmm. And, I, it, and even that doesn't mean there's hope of you getting your old space back because that, that space was really intimate and really close and requires tremendous amounts of respect and responsibility. 
So if you decide that you're only going to bring a, a three level of respect and responsibility, then you'll be out in zone three level. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that maybe you're my child. You know, maybe you you grew up in my home, but you're only going to bring level three respect and responsibility to the relationship. Well, your your child spot is still there, but you are out there with the guy I see at the mall. Yeah. You know, because that's all I expect from him. So the only level of access that the guy at the mall gets is a three, which is, hello, <laughs> having a good day? You need anything? Oh, you fell down. I'll help you. I would help you stand up, but you're not coming home with me. Yeah. But I would help you stand up. I would get you, you know, an ice pack if I could find one. But I'm not going to loan you a hundred bucks or whatever. I, it, it, there's there's level three out there. If that's all you got, that's I'll meet you there. Mm-hmm. But the level ten marriage intimate partner level. That's I. That's the most I require from any relationship I have, and so that's why we have conversations about snoring. You know, I don't have a conversation with anybody <laughs> about snoring, but you. <laughs> it's because you have access to me like nobody does. Yeah. I, I mean, being a, a powerful for forgiver. It, It does feel like that means I know how to remove my agenda or need for punishment that I feel like our flesh desires so Mm, much mm -hmm. and insert a heavenly standard for this relationship to be restored to. Mm -hmm. And, And that exchange of understanding what the power of forgiveness is, it makes for beautiful relationships. Mm -hmm. But if we, dilute forgiveness into a have to kind of experience, well, then I have to stay here and I have to keep forgiving you even though you're not going to change because I don't require something powerful from it. I don't require, I don't requ- I don't know how to require high levels of respect mm-hmm. and responsibility. So rather than grow, I just make an excuse yeah. to not require it. Yeah. yeah and so please Please be a powerful forgiver and understand <laughs> kind of that restoring the standard of what this relationship could have and understanding what is your responsibility versus what someone else's responsibility is in even the forgiving process. Mm-hmm. And, you know, back to the book Unpunishable, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a companion really to culture of honor, loving our kids on purpose, keep your love on, unpunishable. Those, those really go together together in the big picture and the and the how to. Mm-hmm. So the why to and the how to are really sitting in those four books. Um, we, we have Unpunishable, Relationship 101, Parenting 101, and kind of a summary of culture of honor in relationship or uh, leadership, leadership 101. Yeah. But you so you could watch it if you're not a reader, but it's still there's a there's a paradigm that we're trying to communicate that uh, you you cannot keep your love on if you keep your punishment on. Yeah. So you've got to be able to see that you are powerful with your love on, mm-hmm. and punishment is weakness. Fear is weakness. And so if you... If you're going to stay strong and healthy in your relationships, you got to keep your love on, and unforgiveness will shut your love off. And now you're vulnerable. Now you're being controlled by this other person's mistakes. Now you are a slave to their decisions. Yeah. So if you're going to stay powerful, you got to keep your love on. Mm-hmm. And forgiveness is w- one of the behaviors of keeping your love on. Yeah. It's great. It's a good book if you don't have it. Alicia, you should get it. It's good. All right. One more great reason to sign up for the Kylo 5 virtual workshop. Pay what you want pricing. What's pay what you want pricing? It's simply you get to pay whatever you want to attend this powerful workshop. Make a donation of any amount to Loving On Purpose through the link in the show notes, and it'll get you access to this amazing workshop 
Go sign up today. All right. Our next question comes to us from Sam. My personal boundaries do not allow toxic, abusive people in my life. I recently had a falling out with my mother and I went no contact because I am done being abused. I will no longer suffer the constant emotional and verbal abuse and I will not allow it to affect my own child. I tried for over 20 years to be better or create better boundaries or resolve conflicts so that my mom would love and respect me. I am finally free of that burden of responsibility. Now this ministry is being used against me to say it's wrong to sever connection to toxic and if I worked harder, I could fix it. Again, do tell. Y'all think it's okay and rational to allow abuse for the sake of a relationship or a connection? No. <laughs> no. I think there's been some misquoting and misassigning and in, in a, an attempt to have a relationship. Well, I would just go so far as to say these two have a hard time communicating. Yes. I... You know? So who knows who said what to when and what was understood and what. Yeah. Went where, but probably just lots of pain. Yeah. Hopefully, um, this young lady has listened to something besides her mom. Yeah. Uh, around what we've said and what we mean, and and can get a little clearer picture. But it's not uncommon, really, not. for uh, us a hurting spouse or a hurting parent mm -hmm. to try to present information in a way that is manipulative towards where they want this to go. Yeah. And so, you know, I I don't know if anybody's ever misused the Bible before. <laughs> Maybe once or twice. Well, let's just say it happened, you know, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what happens is I start storming, you know, I start raining down scriptures about mm -hmm. how this should work out the way I think it should work out. Yeah. And it's, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever been to a, a legal court situation, but it's pretty interesting how people twist the law to get it to work out the way they want it to, which mm -hmm. is why people get the best law twister that they can hire yeah. to so that this will work out the way they want it to. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, I could hear the frustration there and, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it's no fun, you know, dealing with that. And, sure. But at the same time, I've experienced m my own teaching in a way that I don't recognize it. Yeah. And uh, when I can't even tell you how many leaders have asked me to come teach culture of honor at their church so that I would teach their people to honor them. I'm like, wow, wow, dude. Hey, if you think honor is something you get, you do not understand honor. Yeah. Honor is something that you give. Yeah. And that's, I mean... What I'm hearing from Sam is she sounds frustrated. She sounds hurt um, and confused in the heart of what our ministry is trying to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm assuming that her mom is hearing something that feels like hope and using it to convince. Convince. And, and it's not working. And it's, again, I, I think hurting people are at their worst scared hurting people are at their worst totally. and no matter what tool we're using um you know it might require a, a small drill but they're using a chainsaw mm -hmm. and that's how they've filtered you know this information and it's amazing that what a filter can do to any tool that you have mm -hmm. and i think that's that's partly what probably is going on here and this is what happens when people who are disconnected mm. try to find agreement or or, right, or right. communicate with that goal yeah we're disconnected and now i'm trying to get you to agree with me mm -hmm. it's like no no that's no what you need first is some kind of connection yeah and that is going to require that you communicate that you love each other mm -hmm. not how right you are yeah so hard all right, well, uh, for time's sake, we are going to go into our testimony, though, after that. So Boom. I think it's a, probably a good thing <laughs> to talk about our, some testimonies of things going well. So this testimony comes to us uh, today from Shannon. 
Hey, Dr. Shannon Crawford here. I'm in Keller, Texas, and I've been following Keep Your Love On for ages, and I use your material for leadership. I'm a leadership consultant as well as a therapist. Um, I use it in marriage therapy. I teach at the King's University in Southlake, and we use some of your curriculum with marriage work and also with parenting. So that's been really phenomenal on helping set that culture of why we parent, why we discipline in the way we do instead of just doing that legalistic because I said so type of parenting. Um, it always stands out in my mind when Danny Silk shares the story and his daughter does as well of him saying no problem <laughs> and how it shifted the dynamic in her and she had to start taking responsibility for change behavior. I've seen it work with so many of my clients and I just think you're all are, are amazing and awesome. I'm cheering you on and I recommend your books, resources, your app and all the components that you're doing all the time. Um, and would love to link arms and collaborate. Cheers. Like the little plug at the end. That was great. That was great, Dr. Shannon. Maybe we'll come find you. Um, oh, I, I mean, I love when people reference stories that you told and that I'm telling mm -hmm. as the child that it's actually being told about. It's kind of funny to think about how far things have come from that moment. I'm guessing she's talking about the chicken coop story. Probably so. Yeah, mm -hmm. Beth, I hear mm -hmm. what you're doing there. Mm -hmm. Um, that is, I don't know how many times I'm speaking about parenting. People go, are you going to tell that story? And I used to say, no, <laughs> I'm not telling that story. I'm sick I of that can, story. <laughs> but it's, I have my own stories to tell, though it is a great one. It is a great one, but it's pretty funny. So, mm. but no problem is a, I, I, I love saying it to not even just children, just situations of this is not my problem. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to own it. I'm not going to take ownership of this. And yeah, here it, you go. It's just a diffuser to a power struggle. It is. You know, it's yeah. it's uh, like, okay, well, no problem. Which mm -hmm. reminds me that it's not my job to control you. Yeah. It's my job to control me. Yeah. And I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do on the other side of this. Yeah. But uh, it's powerful stuff. I'm grateful for... Dr. Shannon and, and her appreciation. I appreciate her appreciation. You know, <laughs> I appreciate her support because it is, uh, it's, uh, and I, I hear this all the time that, that people that professionally work with other people in these situations have found just great value in, mm -hmm. in what we produced. And so I am so grateful that how, Ever God worked all this yeah, out yeah. to where we could have an impact like this is uh, super, super satisfying to me. Mm -hmm. It is. It's fun to, you know, to take what you've built, you and mom both, and and be reproducing it in a, di in a new way with a different spin and same heart and same tools and then new tools and um, Ben and I doing it together. You know, the whole message of the Kyla show is whole healthy families are going to save the world and you know, we just got to be in front of a audience of a bunch of families. And, and that's the fun part is giving things away mm -hmm. to um, another group of people that, you know, I don't know that all of them will take it and run with it, but I, the likeliness of, of a handful of them that will is great. Yeah. And, and it's growing. The number's growing. And yeah. what that produces and what that grows is it really is going to be this, the prayer is a movement mm -hmm. um, of health and relationships and, and really loving well. Absolutely. So, well, thanks so much for joining us here on the Kyla show. And in case you forgot, whole healthy families are going to save the world. Mm -hmm. And we're so excited to have you join us with that. Thanks for listening. Never miss an episode of the Kyla show by subscribing to Apple podcasts, Spotify, or watch us on the loving on purpose YouTube channel. Don't forget to submit your questions and testimonies to thekyloshow.com. The Kylo Show is produced by Ali Armerding, co-produced by Ashley Beck and Anna Hill, sound engineer and edited by Taylor Silk, and show promoter Christian Zamora. Don't forget, whole healthy families, gonna save the world.